Hello and thanks for joining me. Today I'm back up in Snowdonia and I've come up to a place called Pont Penabenlog to shoot Rider Ogwin. You might know them better as the Ogwin Falls. Now I've just been up under the bridge to get some handheld shots. Unfortunately, there was no chance of me chatting to you up there because frankly, it was absolutely deafening. There's a huge amount of water coming down off the hills at the moment. I've come up on a Thursday evening before the bank holiday so that I've got the place to myself because I figured that most of the trippers will be arriving about this time tomorrow. These falls are absolutely amazing. They drop from Llinogwyn all the way down into Nant Francon. The drop is actually around about 100 metres, that's 300 feet. It'd be pretty special if it was a straight drop, but it's not. Of course, it's a series of cascades, but with the amount of water in them at the moment, it's pretty epic. Let me tell you a little bit about the history of this bridge, by the way, because it's quite fascinating. The little rubble arch was an original bridge that was on the old path and dates from the late 18th century. But when Thomas Telford was tasked with creating the turnpike road from Marble Arch to Holly Head, he needed to bring the level of the bridge higher up because the maximum gradient he could have anywhere along what became the A5 was 1 in 20. Obviously anything steeper than that would be a real problem for a stagecoach and horses. Now that bridge of his was completed between 1815 and 1830 and it wasn't for another hundred years before it was widened to allow for motor traffic. So around about 1928, Telford's original profile was simply widened and the original rubble arch still stands there to this very day, which let's be fair, is testament to the skill of the people that built it. Of course, when it was built, it did have a road deck on top of it. Well, this is a really good example of waiting it out. I've been stood here for about 25 minutes. I've had my composition dialed in and I just had a hunch that the flank of Trevon might just light up. And guess what? I was just about to start talking you through what I was up to and it all of a sudden it went off. So you'll have to bear with me. So yeah, let me explain what's happening here. This has turned out to be actually a really tough uh, exposure. I didn't expect it to be quite so complicated. The difficulty I've had is that the bulk of the exposure, other than the little slice of sky at the very top uh, and the flank of Trevon, is really quite dark, except for the slash of water zigzagging its way down through the composition. And that's what particularly caught my eye. Uh, I love the way that the stream that comes down from Cumidwell changes direction two or three times before it joins up with the river coming out of Llinogwyn. Uh, so that's what I wanted. I love these really nice pine trees and I like the way that the whole composition leads your eye through. It's kind of naturally bounded. I've got rock on the left, I've got trees on the right and it all leads your eye up the water to Trevan. And what I'm doing here is I'm gathering exposures for my focus stack because um, I had to muck about with this exposure. I've had to up my ISO to uh, 400. Now it's the base ISO on this is 200. So 
um, I've gone up by a stop. The reason for that is I needed to get a faster shutter speed. There's actually so little light that uh, I was finding my shutter speed was up around uh, half a second to a second. The problem with that is because the, the valley is so steep, um, the water cascades down it really quick and I don't want it just to be a, a straightforward white line because it loses the drama. So to try and capture some of that in my image, I do need to have some detail in it. Now, I've gone for a two exposure stack and as you've just seen, I've been taking some exposures for the top of the mountain. I'm gonna take another one here because the very summit of the peak is just starting to clear of cloud and I love that profile. You've probably seen it when you've driven up here and it's, it's the thing that makes you catch your breath as you hit the Ogwin Valley. You see that Razorback uh, profile of the mountain. Absolutely spectacular. As with all good photography trips, really important to be able to adapt to changing conditions. The conditions in question on this particular trip being that I realised that if I decided to climb all the way down to the bottom of the valley, I was going to miss any light that's left and it's fading fast. There really isn't going to be any in the valley. So I've turned around and decided to head back up towards the top because frankly there are plenty of compositions to work with up there. So there I was earlier on, a little bit downbeat about the fact that I didn't get any sunlight in the valley that I was hoping for. Well, let me tell you, I was being a bit previous. Not that I've got any sunlight in the valley, but the sky is absolutely spectacular. If ever there was as wide a lens as you can get required, this is it. I've got clouds scraping across the top of the ridge. I love the way it does that because what happens is as the clouds come over the side of the ridge, the, the rocks kind of drag texture out of the bottom of the cloud and that's lighting up. I've got fluffy clouds sweeping right across to the summit of Penarolwyn and to cap it all, I've got the River Ogwen snaking its way down through the valley. I love sunsets. I love being down on the beach. Uh, on Anglesey, looking west out to sea. But what you get with those often is a, is a burnt out sun. Um, the texture you get in the clouds in the mountains is far superior, in my opinion. Um, this is great, really enjoying this. I might sound like I'm enjoying it a bit too much. The settings that I've gone for on this, as I said, I'm shooting at 12 millimeters as wide as I can go. Can't be bothered with a panorama. I don't really need a panorama. That's fine, absolutely no problem at all. Shooting at f5.6, there's no issue at all with focus. The nearest thing that's in the frame is probably a uh, quarter of a mile away, so dead easy on that front. What I am doing is I'm shooting aperture priority. I've got a little bit of exposure compensation dialed in about two thirds of a stop. What that does is it pushes the histogram over towards the right. It means that I shouldn't have any noise in the darker areas, but I can darken down the sky in post. And I've still got my 0.6 soft grad on um, just to control it a little bit. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's really easy when you just dial in the uh, exposure you want. And then as the light drops, uh, the camera takes care of the shutter speed because it, it doesn't matter. So I just know that my exposure is going to be exactly where I want it on the histogram as the light drops and I can just keep, keep taking frames. I think the best of the light's gone now. 
um, from this particular scene. Still getting some projected light up on Trevon, so pretty sure there's another image to be had there. Well, I think my change of plan worked out pretty well, actually. The time I would have wasted hauling my gear down the valley, I've been able to spend with another composition of Trevon. Um, I'm sorry, but I just really like that mountain, can't help myself. Uh, but with this one, I've gone for a portrait shot. And again, I've had to wrangle the ISO and the aperture to get my shutter speed uh, to about a 20th of a second. I've taken all sorts of different exposures, so I don't know which one I'm going to pick yet. Gone for a portrait uh, composition on this one because what I'm really interested in is showing the impressive stature of the mountain and it's catching the last of the light. Some beautiful colours, the clouds have lit up as well. Um, really well worth coming back up here and kind of going for a similar composition to the first image. Uh, but with completely different and, and frankly more interesting light. And I think that's a lesson in terms of landscape photography. It's very easy to go looking for the next composition, but if you wait it out, you can find yourself with an image of a completely different character um, just by a simple change of light. Yeah, really, really happy with this one. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's not one of my epic hikes, um, but a really pleasant evening out. And Thank you ever so much for coming along with me. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. So uh, I think I'm going to leave it there for this one. Uh, just a couple of things I did want to say. Um, I'd really love to hear from you if you've got some comments on this video or any others. I always reply to all comments, so do feel free to get in touch. Um, also, um, it would really help me out if you wouldn't mind awfully, if you've enjoyed this video, perhaps share it with somebody else who might enjoy it as well. I'd really appreciate that. It would help me out immensely. And finally, guess what? If you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time? Cheers.